Hello, my name is Christy Whitfield, and you're listening to Mayor Bowser's Every Opportunity to Rise podcast. So I am so excited today to be talking about legacy businesses. So throughout the podcast, we have been talking about opening and then growing and then sustaining businesses. But if you do it for a really long time, then you become a legacy business. You know, till death do you part, then maybe you pass it down. And then if you get lucky, you maybe make a jubilee. 50 years. And then I recently learned if it passes 75 years, that's the diamond jubilee. I'm told past that you ask for oxygen. (laughs) That's what they said. Yes. So I'm joined today by the owners of some diamond jubilee plus businesses. So we're going to let them introduce themselves. Tell me your name and the name of your business and how long your business has been in existence, sir. Okay. My name is Luke Brahmi. And I'm one of the principals at Gelberg Signs, and we've been around since 1941. And what Gelberg Signs is, is a full-service sign manufacturing facility. We design, manufacture, install, and service any type of sign. Uh, We do any type of sign, large and small. Uh, Some of our recent projects is we do all the Compass Coffees. Uh, We did the African American Museum. Uh, We did... uh, We've gone as far as Denver. We did the VA hospital in Denver, and we even did the pen feds in Puerto Rico. So we try to be uh, a little bit to everybody in any type of sign. Wow, that's great. Thank Mm -hmm. you. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Glad to be here. And tell us your name and the name of your business, madam. Well, my name is Stacey Lee Banks, and I'm uh, president of Lee's Flower and Card Shop. Um, We've been around since 1945. And so if you do the math, that's 75 years this year. And we're really excited to be, to have been around for three generations. And we have a fourth and fifth coming up. Uh, My goodness. My goodness. So tell me, what does legacy mean for for Lee's Flower Shop? Well, to me, legacy is, uh, well, my grandparents, William and Winifred Lee, uh, founded, established the the business, uh, like I said, in 1945. And in 1968, they really established a legacy by purchasing our building on uh, U Street. Uh, and uh, we were talking earlier about how U Street has made a, a comeback mm-hmm. after many years of being kind of not, not a great place. But right now, U Street is booming. So to me, the legacy is uh, them purchasing the building and, and, having the forethought to do that, to help our business continue. Mm-hmm. How much for you, Look, what, what does legacy mean when you think about legacy? Well, we go way back. Um, it really brings it back to my father, who was a, a North African-American immigrant back in 1959. He came here with two kids, a three-year-old and a, and a five-year-old, and I was a three-year-old. Mm-hmm. And he had a talent. He was an artist. He was an impressionist painter. Well, there's not much work for impressionist painters, around. So what did he do? He hooked up with a sign company, Gelberg Signs. Mm. And he worked his way up through the company, did a lot of great designs for Gelberg. And when Gelberg died, uh, he he assumed the presidency of it um, for like 20 years. And then an outside group of people came and bought the company, kicked my father out, almost bankrupt the company. And uh, we smelled that we could actually buy the company, my brothers and I. So in 1989, uh, the, the Brahmi brothers, Bought it, bought it. I was sweeping the floors there mm-hmm. as a six-year-old, so I knew the company pretty well. So we bought the company, and we've run it since 1989. Wow. Amazing. Oh, my goodness gracious. So, you know, something about the, you know, legacy businesses are institutions, right? They're those places that have always been that that spot, right? And I think if we think about them, People, you know, they're familiar. They're, you know, I think Ben's is another one. I think the Florida Avenue Grill, I, mm-hmm. you know, they're, you know, they're places that people are very familiar with. And, you know, I talk a little bit about what it means to be sort of an institution. Yeah, I will. And that's, 
that's a, that's a lot of hard work on its own. Uh, so what we did in 1990, about a year after we bought the company, uh, we decided we would get involved with the DC, with the community at large. So we got involved in everything. We belonged to the DC Chamber of Commerce, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, we're, I'm on the board for the Washington DC, WDCP. So we're very involved with the DC, uh, government. We do a lot of, we work with a lot of the DC program. We're very involved with project empowerment where we hire kids that have had a tough start in life and we bring them into our shop and we train them. We give them a career. So doing those kind of things for the community, as many people know, sort of like the double bottom line theory. You do good things in a community and it comes right back to business. So involvement with the community and doing good things has made us a staple in the DC um, in the CDC business enterprise. Mm -hmm. how about, how about I, you? I certainly agree with that because we are also involved with the community. We also host students for the mayor's youth leadership program, um, and we've also we've even hired some of them after the summer. Um, we are also involved in community organizations and Street Village and. Duke Ellington School of the Arts and that sort of thing, uh, Martha's Table. So it, involvement in the community helps to, to perpetuate your legacy. Yeah. Now, flowers <clears throat> seem like they might be pretty much the same as they were 70 years ago. Are, have flowers changed much in, in 75 years? I think they have evolved. Um, uh, when I first became involved in the business when I was 12, <laughs> um, flowers didn't last as long as they do now. I think the process or the transportation part of it may, has gotten better and the, the, the way that they, um, transport them over has gotten tremendously better and the chain of life is longer. So I've noticed that flowers have lasted longer. Also, um, there are different uh, styles have changed in floral arrangements since mm. I was younger, more compact and people and people can buy more, uh, loose flowers. And before it was just buying an arrangement. Now people buy loose flowers. Uh, so it's, it's, it's has evolved. So the supply the chain around flowers mm -hmm. and then also sort of the taste right, of flowers. Right, right. Interesting. Yeah. And yeah. then I also, I imagine how people order flowers, right? Oh, that's changed tremendously <laughs> as well. Uh, the traditional wire service where you would, you know, call a florist in your town and then they, they send it to an, another florist. That's changed a lot because the, the internet has opened up the world to being able to just look online for a florist in, say, Cincinnati. You don't have to call your local florist. You just call Cincinnati. So, you know, it, that's changed a lot. So, so if you used to just want to be a florist, now you have to be a person that does supply chain yeah. and technology <laughs> yes. and probably a little chemistry yeah. of how yeah, to keep yeah. them. Well, I mean, they, they, they've gotten better mm -hmm. at that. So. How, mm -hmm. how have signs changed? Uh, dramatically, uh, back in the, in the old days, everything was done by hand. Now, uh, our, our fabricators are probably the most sophisticated tradespeople because they have to know how to work computers. They know, have to know how to read plans and they have to know how to use tools as well. So it's a combination of it. When I walk through our shop, and I see some of the signs these guys can make and the way they make them nowadays. It's incredible. Uh, we have, uh, 3D printers now. We have all kinds of flatbed mm -hmm. printers. So we can do four and five and 10 times the amount of work with the same amount of people. Interesting. Amazing. Well, I think when people start a business, they're usually thinking weeks and months and if they're lucky years down the road, right? But when you've been in business for decades and, you know, looking on a century, I think you have a different type of horizon. Because you've been able to look at things sort of with a different sort of vantage point. So how do you do your business planning? Once again, I, yeah. I mean, that's, that's changed dramatically as well. As we have grown and we're up to 97 people now, um, I'm not thinking about signs that I've got to make in the next month, two months, even year. Right now, I'm looking at jobs that are in 2020 and 2021, 2022. So the future forecasting uh, 
is more important than ever. When we first started with the company, if I had three months worth of business, I was so happy. Now I've got to be out one and two and three years because at 97 people, it's a big family to keep, you know, all our, all our, uh, uh, the, the, just keep them working. So you can't ever stop. It's a nonstop push for the next sign down the road. It's never, never stops. <laughs> and now you're the second generation. Mm -hmm. and third. You're the third generation. Yeah. And you said yeah. you got two more coming. Yeah. Right. So how, yeah. how, how is it for you all? So that's an interesting thing because, you know, you have to, well, if you want to keep the business in the family, you have to, your children have to want to do to continue it on. And so that, for us is kind of a tough thing because some children may not want to to go into the business. So we've we've tried to make it look attractive to them. And they actually some of some of them, <laughs> some of our um, fourth generation are really interested in, in keeping the business going. So we're we. You know, we try to to keep that, keep it attractive and make them want to come, not make them, but attract them to the business and we have i was saying the fifth generation my niece my great niece is 12 and she was in there on valentine's day sweeping the floor mm -hmm. and you know she she really right now wants to do that you know so we we just want to keep it um uh, keep the business attractive to the younger now, generations now i think when you grow up in mm -hmm. a business that you sort of inherently learn things um, can you talk a little bit about what, you know, you can either prove or disavow me of the? No, of that. I, I think you're absolutely right. I went to Howard University for business, but I learned so much more from my grandmother, not saying that Howard wasn't a good school, but as far as running a small business, I learned a lot from my grandmother growing up from just being at the foot of her stool uh, designing flowers to her business acumen. She was very, uh, you know, she was the smartest business person that I know. And not having gone to college or anything, she l knew how to run that business. So, Well, that common sense mm -hmm. sort of in the community Absolutely. of just sort of inventory, mm -hmm. cash flow. Yep. She had all of that in her head without learning it. From a book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How about so, you? Well, <clears throat> I'm sort of the business development person in our company. And what I've learned is surround yourself with people that are smarter than you. <laughs> so I have people in my accounting. They're great accountants. We have an engineers. We have production management people. Wow. We have project managers. So everybody does their job so much better than I could ever think about doing it. And that's what's made it successful is having great personnel. It's mm -hmm. all about people in the sign business. But you started sweeping the floor. Well, I say that because when my father was working as an employee for Gelberg Signs, he'd bring me in on Saturdays and Mr. Gelberg would give me five dollars if I cleaned up around the shop. Mm -hmm. So that's when I say I started cleaning, right. sweeping the floors there. So not really. I was out on my own for 12 years mm -hmm. uh, before we had an opportunity to buy the company. Well, it's, uh, it's sort of interesting uh, that you sort of got that love of the business and then sort of rescued it back. Yeah, well, I've always wanted to, you know, and, and my two brothers as well, to own your own business. It's the American story. Mm -hmm. You know, my father comes off the boat uh, and he puts three kids through college. And uh, it was our opportunity to do that. Yeah. It was really the American story. Mm -hmm. Father said, he always said, I came with $25 in my pocket, puts three kids through college. And um, here we are. So, uh, we've had a company like, as, as far as the Brahmi family since 1989. And so, you know, do you feel like your next generation will? Uh... Well, we don't know yet. All the brothers have children and they're either in college or out of college on their own. They haven't made a decision yet. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think. Uh, I just you... wanted to mention that my sister and I are co-owners now as well. So I, I don't want to leave her out. Right. She's we make a great team. We're kind of yin Christy, yang. yes. Christy. Shout yeah, out to Christy. Christy. Yeah, yes, Christy. I know Christy. Shout out to yep, Christy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to mention her because we have uh, sort of like a yin and yang kind of thing going on there where we, you know, I'm bad guy. She's good guy. She, oh, you're the, bad, you're the bad guy? I'm, I'm the bad guy. You're the bad guy? <laughs> <laughs> but, I, you know. Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> well, you know, it's a, it's a good balance. Right, it's right, right. It's a very good balance. Very good balance. Let me say, I Wrap think that uh, 
it has been it's been a pleasure to 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 hear the story. I didn't know the I didn't know the background on mm-hmm. on your story. Yeah. You know, I think that whenever you sort of look behind the counter of these small businesses, you learn a lot about what what is mm-hmm. happening. And I think that you know we we can never underestimate the value of what is being, you know, the enriching value of what is happening in our small businesses and the the impact of what we are learning and what we're teaching our next generation. Right. And I think the 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 value of owning and then passing that on is I think a wonderful way to end this, you know, this every opportunity to rise podcast. So I want to thank you both so much for being here. Thanks for listening to the EOTR podcast. Please subscribe, like, and share this podcast. Join us next time to learn more about the resources available to you from the DC government. I want you to join the conversation. Use the hashtag EOTR pod DC or email us at eotrpoddc at dc.gov. Thanks again.